All right, I'm going to go ahead and get started with the worship service. I'm going to welcome everybody out here to the Baptist Church this morning. Good to see everybody on this day on our evangelistic outreach day. Amen. I don't know about you, I'm excited. Amen. Yeah, I'm sure Pastor John's going to give more information, talk some more, a little bit more about it. I'm going to tell you one thing right now. While I'm standing up here, it's going to be exciting. <laughs> it's going to be fun. We're going to have a, we're going to have a fun, enjoyable time. We're going to have a fun time doing the Lord's work and doing what the Lord wants us to do as a church. Amen, bro. As the church is supposed to do. As the church is supposed to do. All right, enough of that. Hymn number 106. Hymn number 106, Tell Me the Story of Jesus. Hymn number 106, Tell Me the Story of Jesus. Amen. We'll sing all great. All right, verse number one. Tell, Tell me, me the, the story, story of, of Jesus. Jesus. Write on my heart every word. Tell me the story most precious. Sweetest that ever was heard. Tell how the angels in chorus sang as they welcomed his birth. Glory to God in the highest, peace and good tidings seem to earth. Tell me the story of Jesus. Ride on my heart every word. Tell me the story most precious, sweetest that ever was heard. Fasting alone in the desert, tell of the days that are past. How for our sins he was tempted. Yet was triumphant at last. Tell of the years of his labor. Tell of the sorrow he bore. He was despised and afflicted. Homeless, rejected, and poor. Tell me the story of Jesus. Jesus, write on my heart every word. Tell me the story most precious, sweetest that ever was heard. And left. Tell of the cross where they nailed him, writhing in anguish and pain. Tell of the grave where they laid him. Tell how he liveth again. Love in that story so tender, clearer than ever I see. Stay, let me weep while you whisper. Love, pay the ransom for me. Tell me the story of Jesus, write on my heart every word. Tell me the story most precious, sweetest that ever was heard. Amen, amen. Father, we love you this day, Father, God, together here to the Baptist Church, Father. Sometimes we gather together here, we set aside this time here, Father, we go forward here, we have to gather the worship of Father, the Spirit of Truth, Father. Amen. Sing songs, uh, hymns, and praise, Father, to hear teaching and preaching of the Word. Father, we just thank you very much for this here this morning and living to live your own life. Father, we just pray for this day, Father, for it's a special day of work you set aside for. 
today. And so uh, we praise the Lord for those that are with us here in person. Thank you for your faithfulness to come. And uh, for anyone that's uh, tuned in online, uh, via Facebook or YouTube, we welcome you uh, as well. Uh, as uh, Pastor Aaron uh, mentioned in the uh, uh, opening uh, uh, monologue before we sang, uh, today is a very special Sunday for us. This is our first uh, church-wide evangelistic outreach. Uh, our goal is to try to do this at least one Sunday a month. And so, uh, especially with next week being our first anniversary blowout, this was the perfect Sunday to go out and do something as far as getting the word out, as far as the meeting and so forth. And so uh, I want us to be in prayer about both things, both the outreach this afternoon, uh, as well as the meeting that's going to take place next week. And so uh, what we're going to do today is uh, after morning service, uh, we can all break and go our separate ways as far as uh, getting lunch, or we can all grab lunch together somewhere, whatever uh, the, the church wants to do. Um, and then we're going to gather back here at 2.30, and then uh, we're going to break up into our teams as far as uh, street preaching and door knocking um, and uh, prayer and letter writing and all that. And then we are going to uh, uh, spend about an hour together trying to reach our community for the Lord, and then we'll gather back here once again when we're done, and we will... Uh, uh, have a chance to uh, debrief and share stories as far as what God did, and also uh, have a chance to have something to eat together as well. And so uh, we're looking forward to this. And then, of course, uh, the, the evangelistic outreach today, uh, that is our evening service. And so whenever uh, we break this afternoon, be it 4, 4, 30, 5, whatever the time ends up being, uh, that will be uh, uh, the conclusion of today's activities. And so uh, we're looking forward to this. We're praying that God will bless this. Uh, Aaron and I have been trying to lay some groundwork for the last uh, month or so as far as going out to some neighborhoods and uh, you know doing some door knocking and things like that. Uh, one of the things that we're going to be doing today is as we go through the neighborhoods, uh, we've got these little door hanger packets, and uh, inside the packet uh, is an invitation to the blowout next weekend, uh, as well as some information about the church, a chick gospel track as far as uh, salvation is concerned, uh, a John and Romans booklet, uh, and then also a copy of uh, the Bible Believers Bulletin. And so that way uh, we can introduce some folks to some Bible believing materials uh, that they can get a hold of. And so we're just going to hang these on doors. Uh, obviously, we'll try to meet some people uh, personally. Uh, but one of the things we're going to try to do is just uh, let our community know that we're here and we're here to pray for them. And, um, you know, we want folks to know that uh, whether they come to our church or not, uh, we still love them, we still care about them. And if there's anything that we can do to be a spiritual blessing to them, that's what we want to do. And so, uh, but that's some of what we'll be hanging out. Uh, we've also got some scripture signs for the street preaching team uh, as far as uh, that activity. And then uh, Aaron has uh, scouted out some uh, uh, gated communities that we don't have access to as far as no soliciting and things like that. And those are the neighborhoods that we've targeted as far as our uh, letter writing campaign. And so we'll be writing some letters to those communities because we can't actually knock on those doors, but we can still try to get the gospel to them and let them know that we're thinking of them and praying for them and that we care about them. And so uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, at 2.30 when we gather back after lunch and uh, give a few more details. Uh, but that's kind of the gist of what we're going to do today. And so uh, thank you all for dressing more casually today. Uh, I promise after church this monkey suit is going to go away and I'm going to join you in dressing casually. Uh, you know, when Aaron and I first met, the first time we went out together on visitation, Randy was like, was he wearing a suit? Was he wearing a suit? <laughs> she thought I might be one of those kind of fundamentalists that, uh, you, know, uh, you know, wears a suit when I go to the bed. I knew it. No doubt. So uh, there are some bulletins on the back table. So if you didn't get a bulletin, uh, please make sure that you grab one of those. And then uh, uh, here uh, this month, uh, if you can believe it, uh, we got our August bulletin from Bible Baptist Bookstore early. And so there are some copies of the bulletin back there on the table um, if you uh, would like to have uh, one of those. And so uh, that's it by way of announcements. Anything else I'm forgetting? Congratulations on your house. Oh, yeah. Uh, we uh, signed a lease yesterday. Uh, the, the house is uh, eight minutes from here. Uh, what's the road again? Green Spring Drive. No, but, I mean, what's, what's the road you turn on? Oh, uh, you turn on Bob White Lane off Shoulder Hill Road. Oh, uh, Shoulder Hill Road. So, so it's really, really close. And so, uh, I told uh, Amy that means you and her get together and party. You know? Absolutely. And so, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, at any rate, uh, so we signed a lease yesterday. Uh, we'll get the keys uh, tomorrow, and then uh, then it's just the time trying to find time to actually do the move. You know, because uh, 
there's so many moving parts. And of course, this is the worst possible week because it's the blowout week. <laughs> so uh, at any rate, we're, we're, we're trying to juggle uh, juggle a bunch of different things, but, uh, but God is good. So praise the Lord for that. Uh, but I'm, I'm excited to actually live in something. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. All right. Y'all ready? Ready? Okay, ready. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Aaron. Happy birthday to you. The best part of that is his face is about as red as the songbook, and everybody online can see that. <laughs> Yep. So praise the Lord. And so uh, 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 where, where's your New Testament? Did you bring your New Testament today? Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. And so uh, uh, a while back I bought a, a little pocket New Testament from uh, church Bible publishers. And uh, it's the perfect street preaching uh, Bible and door knocking Bible and all that. And so, uh, you know, I got all fancy and put my name on front of it. I thought, you know what, Aaron's birthday's coming up. Let's get one for him too. So now we, we both have matching New Testaments. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the better looking twin. Yeah, yeah. I should say that for your parents, though, should I? <laughs> I want to say one, one thing yeah. also um, about the stuff this afternoon. I'm looking at all my phone. I don't know if it's raining or not. I'm saying showers. I'm chance of rain and everything right now. We're just, as of right now, we're still going to try to go out and go. Okay, we're not trying to the rain stop us. If it's going to get down for it, then we'll just come back here. We're still going to do the prayer letter, all right, and yeah. we're still doing the praying and everything else for the afternoon. So it's still going to be a good. But I just, I looked down, I noticed it said showers. So yeah. I, I wanted to put that in. I knew it was supposed to be storms in the afternoon, too. As well. It is cloudy today. And so, you know, the, the, the weather may uh, intervene, but uh, uh, we're just going to pray, and, and, and God's will be done. If the Lord wants us to go out, he'll hold the rain off. Uh, if the Lord would rather us gather together for a time of prayer and, and, and to write some letters, then we can do that as well. Uh, one way or the other, we're going to serve the Lord. We'll let him choose how we do it. Amen? All right, so uh, let's transition to a time of prayer. Uh, uh, anybody uh, with a prayer request or an answered prayer that you'd like to share? Yes, sir. Not necessarily an answered prayer, but some praises. And so uh, we should have uh, planned ahead and brought our medications with us. Uh, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, but nevertheless, uh, you know, um, we may have to take her in to get seen. And so uh, Amy's with her right now. Uh, she was uh, a full of things just whimpering, you know, just you know, ripping my heart out. I just had to get watching her like that, you know. And so I uh, just uh, pray for her that uh, the Lord will uh, just uh, intervene. Uh, of course, she's back on her meds, and hopefully uh, everything will uh, will resolve. Uh, but I do ask for your prayers, uh, you know. For and then also pray for Joseph. We didn't even get a chance to visit him this week, though, with all the stuff that's been going on with his move and uh, going out, out of town and all that. So uh, uh, I talked to the nurse yesterday, and uh, it sounds like he's still doing well medically, but his mental state is still kind of 
uh, kind of back and forth. So uh, several different birds there, uh, you know, for our family, and then on top of that, we're trying to move. <laughs> and so uh, at any rate, uh, lots of stuff going on, so we appreciate your players. All right, anyone else? Okay, sure enough. All right. Anybody else? All right, well, if there's nothing else, let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. We'll sing a couple more hymns, and then we'll go ahead and get started with the, the morning message. Our Father in God, we just thank you, Lord, for this day. And Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to gather together in Christian fellowship, Lord. Uh, Father, thank you for these that have come, uh, that have not forsaken the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is. Uh, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for uh, each person. Uh, we thank you for the visitor that we had in Sunday school. Uh, what a joy it was to meet Yvette. And, uh, Lord, we just ask you to watch over her. And, Lord, as she uh, leaves to catch the train to go back to New Jersey, uh, Lord, we just uh, ask that you give her traveling mercies. And we pray that the gospel literature that was given to her would be a blessing. Uh, Lord, she professes to be a Christian. And, uh, Lord, we just uh, pray that you watch over her and bless her. And, uh, Lord, just meet the needs of her heart. And, uh, Lord, bless their family with uh, the loss that they just suffered. And uh, Lord, we uh, also uh, just uh, uh, want to thank you for uh, evangelistic uh, outreach uh, finally uh, coming this Sunday. And uh, Lord, Aaron and I have gone out uh, several times, uh, you know, over the last year, uh, you know, ourselves. Uh, but Lord, we're looking forward to seeing a church-wide evangelistic outreach today. And Lord, we just pray that the weather uh, would be in our favor and that Lord, you would hold off the rain for us to be able to go out. But uh, Lord, if not, then uh, Lord, we uh, uh, certainly uh, submit to your will. And Lord, we'll just come back here and spend more time in prayer and uh, write some letters to these gated communities. And Lord, still try to reach uh, the city of Suffolk with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, I just uh, thank you for the chance to, to get able uh, to, to move over here. And uh, Lord, I just pray that you bless that transition as we work on that. And uh, Lord, we look forward to just uh, being a part of this community. And uh, Lord, uh, I pray, God, that you would just uh, bless the request that we're made mention of today. Uh, Lord, we uh, thank you uh, for the uh, answered prayer uh, or the blessing uh, as far as uh, Kimberly's mother uh, and, uh, and, uh, and granddaughter not being hurt in this accident. Uh, we do pray for this young lady that had to go to the hospital by ambulance. And Father, we just pray, God, that you watch over her and uh, give her doctor's wisdom as far as uh, what needs to be done for her, Lord. And Father, we also uh, uh, pray for uh, uh, Randy's brother as uh, he and his family travel back to Indiana. Uh, we pray for their traveling mercies. And, uh, Lord, we also uh, ask you, Lord, if you would bless Joseph and Lydia today, Lord, for the physical needs that they have, uh, mental needs, uh, more so in Joseph's case. And, uh, Father, we just ask you to bless and work in these young people's lives, Lord, as only you can. And so, Father, may you please uh, bless our service now. May you bless the songs we sing. May they glorify you. Uh, may you bless these prayers that are offered. And, Lord, most importantly, may you bless the preaching of your word uh, so that your word can accomplish what you purpose. And, Lord, we'll thank you. Lord, please watch over us now. Father, we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor, one thing I forgot to mention. Yeah. The young lady's meeting, there was one another that's having a small outpatient surgery, uh, surgery done on her hand on Tuesday. On Tuesday, okay. So it, it should be in half the surgery and coming on that day. So. And forgive me, sister. Is your, is your mom's name Susan? Susan. Susan, okay. I want to make sure I had that right. All right. So y'all pray for Susan as far as this outpatient uh, proceeding. Thank you. All right. All right, we're gonna. I'm gonna throw an audible here. We're gonna do uh, hymn number 449. Hymn number 449. To God be the glory. Amen. Hymn number 449. To God be the glory. Give all I'm going to him. Yeah. All right, we'll sing all three verses. Verse number one. To God be the glory. Great things He hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life and atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. the Son, and give Him the glory, great things He hath done. O oh, perfect 
perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer, the promise of God, the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear His voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give Him the glory, great things He hath done. He hath taught us great things He hath done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport, when Jesus we see. Amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear His voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give Him the glory, great things He hath done. Amen. Amen. All right, the last one, 496. Number 496, Victory in Jesus. Amen. Victory in Jesus. All right, we'll sing all three, and we'll have Pastor come and give us a give us a message. All right, verse number one. I heard an old old story how a Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary. To save a wretch like me, I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing of his cleansing power revealing how he made the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see and then I cried dear Jesus come and heal my broken spirit and somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory. Beneath the cleansing flood, I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea, about the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior.
endure forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming love. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory. The greatest verse in the Bible. The greatest verse in the Bible. Now, of course, the Bible has um, 1,189 chapters in it. It has uh, uh, over, uh, I think, 773,000 verses and so forth. Um, and so there's a lot of verses in the Bible, so uh, it may seem a bit presumptuous uh, to say that I'm going to talk about the greatest verse in the Bible. Uh, but nevertheless... Um, it's just true. Um, this is a verse that's been translated uh, based on who you t uh, choose to believe into at least 872 different languages, and some have estimated that it may have been translated into 1,100 different languages. Now, of course, uh, this verse is the verse that uh, uh, every lost person, at least here in America, has heard. Uh, it's a verse that uh, um, uh, you know Tim Tebow used to uh, wear on his uh, uh, black, whatever they call that black stuff the football players wear under their eyes, you know. Uh, every once in a while when you're watching a football game or a baseball game, you'll see somebody hold up a sign uh, that has this verse on it. And so uh, uh, pretty much everybody's heard of John 3.16. You know, in John 3.16, the Bible says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so, uh, this is by far the most famous verse of the Bible. Uh, and even languages that don't have the whole Bible or even have the whole New Testament, uh, they'll have John 3.16. Now, John 3.16, of course, is not uh, a, a verse that's in a vacuum. Uh, it's uh, part of probably one of the greatest chapters uh, in the Bible uh, as far as uh, this discourse with Nicodemus. Now, you understand the fact of uh, this story that Nicodemus was a, a ruler of the Jews, uh, which means he was a rabbi. Uh, that would have made him a member of the Sanhedrin. And so uh, uh, he's probably uh, an older man, he's certainly an educated man, and he's a man that's held in high regard. And the Bible is going to tell us in this chapter that uh, Nicodemus has come to Jesus by night. Now, of course, by coming by night, there's decreased visibility, and so that means that Nicodemus is less likely to be seen than if he tried to approach Jesus in the daytime. And so there's a method uh, to Nicodemus' uh, uh, madness here. Um, and here's the thing, Nicodemus, uh, he's been hearing about this prophet from Galilee. Now, um, in the Bible, we understand that in chapter 2, it tells us that the marriage at Cana, that turning the water into wine, that that was the first of Jesus' miracles. However, uh, there had to have been other miracles that Jesus did that Nicodemus knew about, as Nicodemus is going to say, uh, because no man can do these miracles, plural, except God be with him. And so he's been hearing uh, about this prophet, and so uh, he wants to come find out who this guy is, what he's about. Now understand that as a rabbi and as a member of the Sanhedrin, uh, Nicodemus has been in Bible school from the time he was knee-high to a grasshopper till right now as an elderly man. And all his life he has looked for and sought for and fawned for the coming of the Messiah. And so with that as a backdrop, it says in John chapter 3 verse 1, that there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. And so again, uh, Nicodemus has heard about the things that Jesus has been doing. And so in verse 3, uh, Jesus completely ignores the flattery. Uh, he completely ignores the praise. And he gets right down to brass knuckles and says this. He says in verse 3, 
Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, uh, whatever born again is, you better find out because that's going to determine where you will spend your eternity. Because if you're not born again, uh, listen, if you never experience this new birth, not only are you not going to go to heaven, you won't even see it. Except a man be born again, uh, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Uh, so many times in the Gospels, uh, Jesus is speaking on a spiritual plane, uh, but people are understanding him on a physical plane. And so uh, Nicodemus in his mind, uh, born again, oh, well, does that mean I have to be uh, born again physically through my mother? Uh, I, I imagine that that's, uh, in his mind that's putting him in quite the pickle because he's probably at an age where his mother's not around anymore. And so if that's a requirement to see the kingdom of God, Nicodemus is in a mess. He says, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. You know, I posted a, a, a little thing on Twitter the other day as far as what the gospel is. And I screenshot it and shared it on Facebook so I didn't have to write the, thing, the same thing twice. <laughs> and there's a fellow uh, that responded on there, and uh, he's probably an Acts 238-er, uh, because he started making some comments about uh, having to be baptized also. And of course, uh, you know, I responded back that baptism is not part of salvation because baptism is not part of salvation. Here a few weeks ago, we baptized our first convert here at Truth Baptist Church. Uh, uh, went down to the, the boat landing. And Matt and I just about both fell in the water. We almost both got baptized. <laughs> and so, uh, uh, but nevertheless, uh, we baptized Matt. And one of the things I made sure that Matt understood before we ever did this is that you're not doing this to get saved. You're doing this because you are saved. Too many folks are getting the cart before the horse. Uh, they're thinking, well, i got to get baptized, then I can be saved. No, you're going to get baptized if you're saved, and if you're not saved, you ought not to get baptized. And so, uh, but I told this fellow on Facebook that made these comments, I said, uh, can you show me the word baptism? Verse 5 said to be born of water and of the Spirit, but it didn't say baptism. Isn't it kind of funny that when people see the word baptism, they automatically think water, and when they see the word water, they automatically think baptism? Uh, listen, friend, uh, there's seven baptisms. Seven of them. Not just one. That's why Hebrews 6.1 talks about the doctrines of baptisms, plural. There's more than one. Uh, of the seven, only three of them involve water. The other four have nothing to do with water. And so it didn't say baptism here. It didn't say except you be born by baptism and of the Spirit. It said except you be born of water and of the Spirit. And watch this. Verse 6 is going to define verse 5. In verse 5 it says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. You've got two baptisms in verse 5, and you've got two baptisms in verse 6. The, the two in verse 5 are water and spirit. The two in verse 6 are flesh and spirit. What does that mean? That means that the water in verse 5 corresponds to the flesh in verse 6, even as the spirit in verse 5 corresponds to the spirit in verse 6. And so we are born the first time physically, in the flesh. It's by water, because your body is more than 70% water. Years ago, there was a TV show called The Six Million Dollar Man. Y'all ever watch that? I used to watch that show and had to, I even had the Bionic Man action figure. I also had the Bionic Woman. Don't judge. You can't have the Bionic Man and not have the Bionic Woman. I'm just going to say that the bionic woman was my sister's. That's probably what I should have said. <laughs> but the six billion dollar man, right? You know what you are? You're about the six dollar and eighty six man, or the six dollar and eighty six woman. You know why? Because your body is seventy percent 
water, and if you took all the water out, you'd be a little pile of dirt uh, with various minerals as far as potassium and sodium and things like that. And if you added all that up, that's about how much you'd be worth, about $6.86. Although this is the Biden era, so there's inflation. So you're probably worth about $16 now. <laughs> and so, but nevertheless, uh, you're mostly water. Uh, when a baby is born, before a baby is born, we say that her water breaks. So you are born by water into this world. You are made of water. Therefore, your first birth, your physical birth, your literal birth, it's a water birth. It's a flesh birth. But it's also a corruptible birth. Because you are a descendant of Adam. And the Bible says that for by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so then death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Uh, we all have a corrupt physical birth because the father and mother that birthed us into this world were sinners, and their parents were sinners, and their parents were sinners, and their parents were sinners, parents were sinners all the way back to the first sinners, Adam and Eve. Therefore, if all you ever have is a first birth, you'll die and go to hell and never see the kingdom of God. Therefore, in verse 7, Jesus said, Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Listen, born again has got nothing to do with going to church. Being born again has nothing to do with whatever denomination you might come from. Being born again has nothing to do with you getting baptized, keeping commandments, or doing any other work. Being born again is accomplished by the Word of God when a sinner believes. <coughs> the Bible, look, look over at 1 Peter chapter 1. I know we haven't got to John 3.16 yet. Don't worry, we're coming there. You know me, my, my sermons are about 35 for, uh, minutes of introduction and about 10 minutes of uh, actual sermon content. That's how Brother Baker used to do it, and I've never, never gotten over who trained me. 1 Peter chapter 1. And 1 Peter chapter 1, look at verse 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed. You see, your father had a corruptible seed because he was a sinner. Therefore, your first birth, your physical birth, your flesh birth, your water birth, it's corruptible. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. In the parable of the sower and the seed, in Luke chapter 8, verse 11, it says, the seed is the word of God. Uh, listen, uh, you were born into this world the first time physically, <coughs> but you need to be born a second time spiritually, and that takes place when the seed of the Word of God is planted in your heart and the Spirit of God births you into the family of God by faith in Jesus Christ. Ye must be born again. And if you're not born again, you'll die and go to hell. Verse 8, John 3, 8. The wind bloweth where it listeth, blows where it wants to, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth, so is every one that is born of the Spirit. You know, we talked about how it might rain today. I would imagine if you go outside right now, there's probably a breeze blowing. <clears throat> Prove to me there's the wind. Show me a picture of the wind. You can't show me a picture of the wind, but it blows where it wants to, and you hear the sound thereof. Listen, uh, how do you know there's a wind? Because you can feel it. How do you know there's a wind? Because you can see what it does as far as in the trees and so forth. We want to see the power of the wind. Uh, just uh, look at a hurricane or a tornado or a cyclone or any of these uh, uh, calamities that take place. And so he says uh, that it blows uh, uh, where it listeth. And now here is the sound thereof. But canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth, so is every one that is born of the Spirit. Therefore, it's a spiritual birth. It's not something that you see but you see the fruit of it. The Bible says that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I want to say today that the fruit or the evidence of a new birth is a new creature and a new man. 
And we've got too many people running around today that profess to believe in Jesus Christ, but there's no evidence of a new creature or a new man in their life. Therefore, it's a legitimate question about whether or not they've ever experienced a new birth. I'm all for soul winning. I'm all for witnessing. Uh, listen, we're setting aside the afternoon to go out and do it today as a church. But let me say something to you. If all you've got is some empty prayer of one, two, three, pray after me, or some empty believism that's never changed your life or had any impact on your life and made a difference in your life, you better check out whether you've had a new birth or not. Too many people claiming to be born again because they said a prayer. Oh, I believe in God. Congratulations, the devil believes also and trembles. All this nonsense about uh, repentance uh, being simply a change from unbelief to belief. It's damnable heresy, and it's going to put people in hell. It's no different than the Pharisees that, uh, that went across the land trying to scour up uh, proselytes, and Jesus said, you've made them twofold more the, uh, the child of hell than yourselves. Uh, I tell you what, if you've never seen yourself as a sinner uh, that offended God, and understand that you have violated the commandments of God, and that you're going to hell because you've broken God's commandments, if God never gets a hold of your heart and hangs you out over hell and shows you the sinner that you are, you'll never get born again. Sinners in the hands of an angry God. Remember that one? Jonathan Edwards? The old Calvinist? Do you realize he didn't preach that message? Didn't preach it. Just read it. Had a manuscript. And stood up in the pulpit and read this manuscript. And historical accounts talk about how people uh, were, were grabbing the pews uh, so hard that their knuckles were turning white. Uh, they were begging God not to cast them into hell. You know what happened? Holy Ghost conviction fell upon their hearts, manifested to them sin, righteousness, and judgment to come. And you know what happened to them? They experienced repentance towards God and faith towards the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you never experience repentance towards God, you'll never experience faith towards the Lord Jesus Christ. You can one, two, three, pray after me all you want to. You'll still die and go to hell. And I'm sick to death of the false accusation. And I know this is almost turned into a hobby horse for me, man. But I'm sick to death of the false accusation. Oh, you're adding works to the gospel. Really? What work am I adding? What work am I adding to the gospel? I'm not saying that someone has to be baptized. I'm not saying they have to join the church. I'm not saying they have to keep commandments. I'm not saying they have to obey sacraments. Uh, I'm not saying that they have to clean themselves up before they come to Jesus. Uh, I'm not preaching reformation. I'm preaching regeneration. And regeneration is by the blood. And regeneration comes when a sinner places their faith in the shed blood of Jesus Christ for the uh, remission of their sins. And it's all based on the finished work of Christ on the cross who said, it is finished. I'm not adding anything to that. What work am I saying that you have to, uh, to have? Oh, uh, uh, John Howe, he preaches lordship salvation. Really? Uh, well, last time I checked, the lordship salvation has said that if Jesus isn't Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. Isn't that what they say? You ever heard me say that? Who's ever heard me say that? Time and date, please. I've never said that. That's nonsense. Uh, listen, I I'm standing before you right now, uh, uh, as open, as transparent as I can be, and Jesus Christ is not Lord of every area in my life like He ought to be, and I doubt that He is in your life either. Now, should He be? Yes. Is He? No. You know why? Because we have a divine nature, but we also have a sin nature, and the two are in conflict, and unfortunately, sometimes, we let the sin nature win out. That doesn't change the fact that the divine nature is still there. <laughs> Verse 9, Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. 
If I have told you earthly things, and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. Keep your King James Bible. Don't let anyone take your King James Bible from you. Uh, don't let anyone get you all upset about these and thous and TH endings and better manuscripts and original languages and all that stuff. Keep your King James Bible. Because if you switch over to an NIV or an ESV or some other V, uh, that last part of verse 13, even the Son of Man which is in heaven, uh, that's omitted in all modern translations. The New King James is probably an exception. Uh, the MEV, the Modern English Version, <clears throat> which professes to be based on the Texas Receptus, it might be an exception. But most modern translations... Be quiet, Siri. Happens every week. I'm, I'm going to start taking my Apple Watch off before I preach. <laughs> but listen, uh, uh, most modern translations, they take off that last half. You know why? The oldest and best manuscripts don't have it. You know what I, I have to say about the oldest and best manuscripts? Well, never mind. Listen. What's important about that statement? Where's, Nick, uh, wh where's Jesus at? He's on earth having a conversation with Nicodemus. But it says, even the Son of Man which is present tense in heaven. You know what we call that? Omnipresence. Do you know what omnipresence is indicative of? Deity. What does that verse show? that Jesus Christ is God. So the next time the, the, the nice looking little Mormons knock on your door with their nice white press shirts and their black ties and their bicycles parked by the curb, I just tell them if they get right with God, he'd give them a car. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, you know, yeah, I, I actually rolled down the window and yelled that at a couple of Mormon missionaries one time and my wife wasn't too happy about that. Uh, but ne nevertheless, here's the thing. You can knock on doors till the cows come home. If you don't even know who Jesus Christ is, how can you be born again? And if you're not born again, you will not go to hell. Stop, just ask him, John 3.13, how could Jesus be on earth talking to Nicodemus and in heaven at the same time if he's not God? And you let me know what the answer is. I can tell you right now, they won't have one because there isn't one other than Jesus is God manifest in the flesh. Verse 14, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have eternal life. Tis recorded in His word, Hallelujah! It is only that you look and live. Look and live. I forget the next part. Help me out. My brother live. My, yeah, and so there we go. Uh, look and live. What did Moses do? He held up a brazen serpent on a pole. Those that had been bitten by the serpents that were dying, what did they need to do? Look. Look and live. Not look and keep the law. Not look and obey commandments. Not look and do this, this, or this. Look and live. You know what you need to do this morning if you're not saved? Look and live. Only this time it's not a serpent on a pole. It's a Savior on a cross who died for your sins according to the Scriptures, was buried, and rose again the third day for your justification. See, He's not on the cross anymore, but He went there on your behalf, and He bore your iniquities in His body on the tree, uh, the just for the unjust, that He might bring us to God. Verse 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Uh, listen, uh, let me give you uh, eight reasons. Not, I promise I'm not going to elaborate on all eight of these for very long. But let me give you eight reasons why this is the greatest verse in the Bible. Now you may have a different verse that, that, that's your favorite verse. I do. Uh, my favorite verse in the Bible isn't John 3.16. Uh, my favorite verse is 2 Corinthians 8.9. 
For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. That's my favorite verse. And so I'm not saying that this is the greatest verse in the Bible uh, because it's my favorite verse. I'm saying it's the greatest verse in the Bible because of what it says. First of all, I want to say this. This is the greatest verse in the Bible because it says, For God, and that's the greatest power that's ever existed or ever will exist. For God. The greatest power. Uh, listen, uh, the Bible says that in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. It doesn't matter what Darwin said. It doesn't matter what Stephen Hawking said. It doesn't matter what any other philosopher that poses as a scientist says. Evolution isn't based on science. It's based on philosophy because it's a bunch of perverts that don't want there to be a God that they have to give account to. Therefore, they've come up with a system of faith because evolution is a faith-based religion. They've come up with a system of faith that lets them live like the devil and not have a God to give an account to. But I've got news for you. The Bible says, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. For as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment, in the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. There is a day of adjustment. There is a day of accountability. And that's because there is a God. And this God said, let there be, and there was. Let there be light, and there was light. Uh, let there be a firmament, and there was a firmament. Uh, let the dry land appear, and the dry land appeared. Uh, let there be the sun, the moon, and the stars, and there was. Uh, let there be the aquatic life as far as the fish of the sea and whales and all those different things. And then he said, uh, let the earth bring forth seed as far as all the vegetation and the plants. And then God committed the ultimate act of creation when he made man in his own image. In the beginning, God. That's, listen, there's no power like that. These knuckleheads say, the Big Bang Where'd the power come from for the Big Bang? Uh, listen, the first law of thermodynamics says that, uh, uh, that you cannot have the creation of energy. And so, uh, if you can't create energy, where did the energy come from that caused the so-called Big Bang? You see, they got it all in reverse. The Big Bang is not at the beginning. The Big Bang is at the end when he melts this earth with fervent heat. And listen, uh, it's not evolution as far as man moving upward. It's de-evolution as far as man moving backwards to the point that eventually in the lake of fire, he's nothing uh, uh, left but a red maggot. The world gets it wrong every time. Even as this book gets it right every time. And so, uh, it's the greatest verse because this is the greatest power. Fear not Him that kills the body and afterward can do nothing. Rather, fear the one that after He has destroyed the body can put you in hell forever. That's the one you need to fear. Uh, listen, uh, God is a God of power. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament His handiwork. Uh, whether it's something in the solar system as far as shooting stars or solar flares or whatever the case might be, or whether it's a hurricane or some cataclysmic thing on this earth, God reveals His power through the creation that He's made. This is, this is the greatest verse in the Bible because it says, For God, the greatest power. Uh, number two, I want to say this. Uh, this is the greatest verse because it shows the greatest love. Not only is God the greatest power, but this is the greatest love. For God so loved, so loved. Uh, listen, there's all kinds of love in this world today. You know, uh, uh, we've got the Johnsons here, and Aaron is their son. And so there's uh, this, uh, the, the love that you have for a child. 
uh, we've got uh, uh, Byron and Joanna here that are a married couple. And so there's the love that you have as far as your spouse. Uh, and then uh, uh, there's a grandchild here with us today. And so uh, there's uh, the love that you have for a grandchild. Uh, you know, if you have brothers and sisters, there's that kind of love. There's all kinds of different loves in the world. But there's no kind of love like this love. Yeah. No kind of love like this love. I don't care how much you love your wife or how much you love your husband. It's not like this. I don't care how much you love your mom and dad or mom and dad. I don't care how much you love your kids or your grandkids. There ain't nothing like this kind of love. The Bible says that for God so loved. Listen, God was willing to become a man to come into this world that he might taste death for every man. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I'm chief. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. They shall look upon me whom they have pierced. Look upon who? Hey, Jehovah Witness, they shall look upon who? Oh, wait a minute. In our version, we changed it to they shall look upon Him. But you know what? The King James Bible says they shall look upon Me whom they have pierced. Why does it say Me? Because Jehovah God is the one that's speaking. Because Jehovah became a man in the form of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ tasted death for every man that He might bring us back to God. And that's why this is the greatest love. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends if ye do whatsoever I command you. Uh, you know, scarcely for a righteous man would some dare to die. Uh, but listen, uh, Christ commendeth His love toward us, and the while we were yet... National Convention, they booed God. <laughs> the Republicans ain't no better. <laughs> I'm not trying to just pick on the Democrats. I'm just saying, uh, when you boo God at your National Convention, that speaks volumes about what you think about the Lord. You know, uh, uh, we've talked before, uh, Aaron's mentioned it, and I've mentioned it too, about this one fellow that was a sodomite. And uh, he, uh, he's holding a sign on the, on, on the streets in this picture. And it says, if Jesus comes again, kill him again. Good luck with that. Because he came as the suffering lamb the first time. He's coming as a roaring lion the second time. Mm -hmm. Good luck with that. Dr. Ruffin used to have this uh, 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 chalk talk painting that he did. And it's uh, a picture of Jesus on a white horse wearing uh, many crowns. And it looks like the horse is coming right at you. And the caption says, 
Guess who's coming back? And boy, is he mad. <laughs> the Bible talks about folks getting trampled like grapes with blood up to the horse's bridle. Uh, that's about two and a half feet on the average horse. That's a lot of blood. Mm -hmm. It says for about 175 miles there in the valley of Armageddon. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. Mm. Listen, the greatest sinners. Well, watch this. He gave the greatest gift. For God so loved the world that he gave. Yeah. You know, Jesus said, uh, it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. And so uh, we've all given gifts. We've all received gifts. You know, today is uh, you know uh, Aaron's birthday. And so, uh, knowing his birthday was coming up, uh, uh, his mama has made a cake for him and brought it to church today. You know, uh, I, in Sunday school, I think, uh, or not Sunday school, but in the announcements, I mentioned that, uh, how I got him a New Testament, you know, uh, for his birthday so that we could have matching New Testaments. We're, we're twins now. You know? <laughs> uh, but listen, uh, you know, uh, we, we give gifts for things like that, for birthdays. We give gifts for anniversaries. You know, uh, uh, my daughter, uh, Abigail, was uh, pregnant with her second child. first one was a girl, second one was a boy. So uh, uh, her friends had a baby shower for her yesterday. And so they brought her all kinds of gifts, like probably, I would imagine, baby boy clothes and, and things that are for a baby boy. And so we do things like that. We give and we receive. But we've never given or received anything like this. Right. Listen, you deserve to be in hell but because God gave His only begotten yes. Son, you have the free gift of yeah. eternal life and salvation because of the gift that God gave. Yeah. Yeah. There's no greater gift than that. No, yeah. no greater gift than that. Yeah. He gave His only begotten Son, the greatest power, the greatest love, the greatest sinner, the greatest gift, and now the greatest person. He gave His only begotten Son. Uh, listen, um, all the new versions say His one and only Son. <laughs> they don't like that Greek word, monogene. Mono, one, gene, generate. Monogene, compound word, which means to generate or begat. Right? Well, again, the oldest and best manuscripts don't have it. Well, there's a trash can right there in the back of that room. That would be a good place for you to bestow your oldest and best manuscripts. Because watch this. Is Jesus God's one and only son? Nope. Absolutely not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Last week, uh, Pastor Aaron preached on 1 John uh, chapter 3, verses uh, 1 to 3. And he talked about, beloved, now are we the sons of God. Right. Paul says in Galatians, and as well as Ephesians, and also in Romans, he talks about how we receive the adoption as sons. Right. Jesus isn't God's one and only son. By the new birth, all of us are the sons of God. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But Jesus is Begotten Son of God because He's the only Son that God ever begot in the flesh through a virgin named Mary. Right. You better keep your King James Bible. That's right. Oh, uh, 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 it just takes out the these and thats. <laughs> it just takes off those T H endings. I mean, really, a uh, turn or turn. Yeah, I can't understand turn, so let me understand turn. <laughs> go or go. Yeah, I really can't understand that TH ending. Uh, let me uh, have go, because goeth doesn't make sense to me. Uh, 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 oh, oh, we don't talk like that anymore. They didn't talk like that in 1611. Nope. But God moved those translators to translate the way they did, because the Word of God was never intended to sound like Reader's Digest or the front page of the New York Times. Right. right. Stick with your King James Bible. Listen. The only begotten Son. Who's the only begotten Son? The Lord Jesus Christ. Right. And He's the greatest person. You know, the Bible says uh, that He, God the Father, had made Him, God the Son, to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Uh, the Bible says that there is no 
guile in his mouth. He never so much as even told a lie. You've raised two boys. You know what boys do. Imagine having a boy that always cleaned his bedroom. Imagine a boy that the first time you told him to do something, he did it the first time, and he did it the right way the first time. Imagine a boy that never talked back, never gave you no sass. Uh, imagine a boy that always sacrificially wanted to do something just to be a blessing to his mama. Now, I'm not saying that Aaron and Ryan didn't do that some of the time, but I'm sure there was plenty enough times where they didn't as well. But here's one that's so holy and so pure that he never even had guile in his mouth. Mm -hmm. My goodness. If guile in our mouths was the least of what we've done, we'd be in pretty good shape, wouldn't we? Mm -hmm. But he didn't have that much. You know, I, I come over to a Song of Solomon just for a second. Song of Solomon doesn't get a whole lot of attention uh, as far as preaching, and it doesn't get a whole lot of attention, uh, you know, uh, uh, as far as uh, um, teaching and just attention. But I want you to notice the Song uh, of Solomon, uh, chapter number five. I've got a message that I uh, preach every once in a while called "What's So Special About Jesus Christ." What's so special about Jesus Christ? And the text for that message is right here. Now, I'm not going to give you the message. But I definitely want you to see the text. In verse 9, the beloved is asked a question. What is thy beloved more than another beloved, O thou fairest among women? What is thy beloved more than another beloved that thou dost so charge us? And here's the answer. My beloved is white and ruddy, the cheapest among ten thousand. His head is as the most fine gold. His locks are bushy and black as a raven. His eyes are as the eyes of doves by the rivers of water, washed with milk and bitterly set. His cheeks are as a bed of spices, as sweet flowers, his lips like lilies dropping sweet-smelling myrrh. His hands are as gold rings set with the barrel. His belly is the bright ivory overlaid with sapphires. His legs are uh, as pillars of marble set upon sockets of fine gold. His countenance is as Lebanon, excellent as the cedars. His mouth is most sweet, yea, he is altogether lovely. This is my beloved, and this is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. Uh, uh, there's a woman that wants to brag on her husband. Uh, there's a woman that's uh, infatuated and overcome with love because of how pure and how holy and how righteous her beloved is. And guess what? Who's she? The church. Who's he? Christ. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Yeah. The greatest person. Coming back to John chapter 3, though, not only that, not only the greatest person, I want you to notice this, the greatest invitation. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him now, I don't want to get too political here with you. Uh, there's some folks that like Joe Biden or some that don't. When Trump was president, there were some folks that liked him, and there were some folks that don't. Uh, when Clinton was president, Obama was president, Bush was president, Reagan, all of them. There were some folks that liked him and some folks that didn't. But you know what? Whether you like them or not, let me ask you a question. Would you be honored to receive an invitation to a state dinner at the White House? Mm -hmm. Oh, you best believe you would. And it don't matter who the president is. The fact that the president, whoever he or she happens to be, invited you to the White House, the emblem, the most famous emblem in the entire world, probably, most famous residence in the entire world, you'd go in a heartbeat. And you'd keep whatever political opinions you got to yourself. Just out of respect for the office. And not necessarily the person that occupies it. You would be overjoyed to get such an invitation. Uh, listen, uh, maybe there's some person that you greatly admire. You know, uh, uh, he, uh, he's uh, gone now, but I believe he's with the Lord. I hope he is. He, uh, I believe he made a good profession uh, before he died. But Rush Limbaugh. I used to love listening to Rush Limbaugh on the radio. Man, how honored I would have been to have been invited to Rush Limbaugh's house if he would have ever invited me. 
you know, uh, 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 someone uh, that, that has regard uh, for the Pope. And I realize we're not Catholics, but if the Pope invited a Catholic person uh, to the Vatican, uh, they would be overjoyed. Me, I'd bring some chick tracks that says, why is Mary crying? <laughs> 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 but I'm just kind of ordering like that. But you've never received an invitation like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whosoever will, let him come uh, and take of the water of life. Mm -hmm. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Listen, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him is the greatest invitation. Why would you reject that? You know, every time I preach on the streets, before I conclude my message, I always say something to the effect of, harden not your hearts. Behold, now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. Right. It's an invitation. And listen, this invitation right here is the greatest invitation that anyone could ever receive. Not only the greatest invitation, but should not perish, should not perish the greatest salvation. You know, uh, this morning, Kim, and your name is Grace, right, sweetie? Kim and Grace, they were saved today. Y'all know that? They were saved. They were delivered. Because they were in a car accident that could have taken their lives, but God in his mercy delivered or saved them. That's a great salvation. It's not as great as this one. Yeah, right. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? The author of Hebrews asks. Listen, God has offered you the deliverance and salvation of your soul. It's one thing to be delivered from a car wreck. Praise God. But it's a completely different thing to be delivered from your sin that's going to take you to hell for right. eternity. Right. Uh, there's no salvation like this one. Yeah. You, know, you can be walking across the street. You know, uh, you know, one time when I was a small child, I was stepped out in front of a car. My mom swears to this day that a hand came out of nowhere, kind of like Daniel 5, I guess, <laughs> <laughs> and grabbed me by the shirt collar and pulled me back. I don't know if the devil was trying to take me out early so I wouldn't be here to preach this message today or what. All I know is this, is I was delivered. And that's great to be delivered from a car wreck or, or I mean, from a getting ran over by a car. Uh, listen, uh, doctors and nurses, right across the street, we got some Tara Bell Harbor. I guarantee in that ER every day, there's people coming in there with heart attacks and respiratory distress and, you know, uh, all kinds of emergencies, I'm sure. And those highly trained doctors and nurses are delivering and saving people in that ER because that's what doctors and nurses do. Yeah. And that's wonderful. Praise God. Uh, maybe you've got a financial crisis. <coughs> Anthony, Anthony has given you a million dollars. I'll give you my bank number and routing number after church. Here. And so now, now I'm delivered from my financial crisis. Right? There's all kinds of salvation. There's no such thing of any salvation that pulls a pillar in this. That's right. This is the greatest salvation. Okay? Because you are offered this next one. Everlasting life, which is the greatest possession. What shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world with his own soul? Yea, what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Thou fool! This night shall thy soul be required of thee. And I'm going to butcher it. I'm going to quote the rest of the butcher it. But what's going to happen with all the stuff you need mind? Because now is your time to step into eternity. And you're not taking your house with you. You're not taking your car with you. You're not taking your 401k with you. Uh, you're not taking any of your possessions that you love, that you hang on the wall, that you admire. Covered so greatly. None of that stuff's going with you. Joe Barty told you you came in naked and you're going out the same way. That's right. That's why this is the greatest possession eternal life. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. 
For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, let's say that you boast. And so the greatest possession you can have is not a Mercedes or a Bentley. It's not a mansion. It's not a yacht. It's none of those things. It's the gift of eternal life, which is going to last forever and ever and ever. Amen. And so the greatest verse in the Bible why is it the greatest verse in the Bible? Because we have the greatest person offering the greatest love to the greatest sinners, which is the greatest gift about the greatest person. Therefore, it's the greatest invitation, the greatest salvation, and the greatest possession. How could John 3.16 not be the greatest verse in the Bible? How could it not be? And listen, how could you reject that? And die and go to heaven. And yet there are hundreds or thousands of people down through the years that we've all had a chance to either street preach to, knock on doors, offer them gospel tracts, have one-on-one -on -one witnesses, hold up a scripture sign. We've done all those things and yet many of them, and I don't have time for that. I, I don't have time. I had a fellow tell me that he didn't have time for my spaghetti monster in the sky. I have no idea what a spaghetti monster in the sky <laughs> He said, you don't have time for my spaghetti monster in the sky. Well, you'll have time someday. But unfortunately, in hell, there is no time. Mm -hmm. Time is for this life. There is no time in eternity. And hell is outside the physical planes of this world. It's in a, uh, a dimension where there is no time. Right. You better take advantage of the time you've got now. Yeah. Let's, let me say something to you. At some point, the sands of your hourglass are going to Today, in a couple short hours, we're going to have a chance to go out and once again share the glorious gospel of God's saving Lord. And I pray that as we do it, we can keep John 3.16 in mind because the greatness of that verse is revealed in the things we talked about this morning. Let's pray. Our Father and God, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for this opportunity. And Lord, we thank you for this chance to be here today, Lord. And Father, just to spend time in your word, to spend time in fellowship one with another. And Lord, I just pray that we would uh, be mindful of these important truths as we go out this afternoon and do our best to be witnesses for you. And Father, I pray that you would fill us with your spirit. Uh, give us the love for the people we're about to encounter. Lord, I pray for open doors and open hearts. Lord, open their eyes to see, open their ears to hear, open their hearts to understand. Lord, let not that wicked one come and pluck away the uh, seed of his soul. Uh, Lord, I just pray, God, that you would uh, bear witness to the truth. Father, may they experience sin, righteousness, and judgment to come as far as that understanding, that they might have repentance towards God and faith towards the Lord Jesus Christ. Please watch over us and bless us now, Lord, we pray. And Lord, we'll thank you for all these things. Jesus' precious name.